In this video, I'll review the location, function, and clinical applications associated with the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is also known as the basal nuclei. And the term ganglia is a little misleading because that usually refers to neuronal cell clusters found outside of the central nervous system. Nuclei is usually the term that we use when we're referring to clusters of neuronal cell bodies within the central nervous system. So technically the term basal nuclei is correct, but these structures are still referred to commonly as the basal ganglia. So we're going to refer to them as what they're most commonly referred to, and that is the basal ganglia. Now the basal ganglia is a collection of cerebral nuclei. Again, cerebral nuclei are deep masses of gray matter. They're where we have clusters of neuronal cell bodies. So there's a lot of synapses present there and there's a lot of integration of nerve signals coming from different regions within the central nervous system. So again, the basal nuclei are, are a collection of cerebral nuclei and they communicate with each other and their cerebral cortex to modify and control our behaviors, thoughts, and movements. What you see in this image on the left here is a cross section of the brain. And what you see in red are some of the structures that make up the basal ganglia. This includes the caudate nucleus, also includes what we call the putamen, and the external and internal globus pallidus. The structures that you see in this image that are highlighted in this purplish blue color are structures that are not technically part of the basal ganglia, but they are related to the basal ganglia because they do communicate with the basal ganglion structures. So that includes structures like the thalamus, the claustrum, and the amygdala. So again, the major function of the basal ganglia is to prevent unwanted or exaggerated movements, behaviors, and thoughts. And by understanding this, you can think of some clinical applications associated with the structures of the basal ganglia. And that is because disorders that are characterized by unwanted or exaggerated movements, behaviors, and thoughts may be associated with damage to the structures within the basal ganglia. Can you think of any disorders that are characterized by unwanted or exaggerated movements, behaviors, and thoughts? Some examples of these would include Tourette's, obsessive compulsive disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD, Parkinson's disease, Huntington's disease, schizophrenia, addiction, and autism. And you may be able to think of some other disorders that may also be associated with these unwanted or exaggerated movements, behaviors, and thoughts. So as you can see, these masses of gray matter deep within the brain that make up the basal ganglia are really, really important in modifying your movement, your behaviors and thoughts, and preventing unwanted or exaggerated movements, behaviors and thoughts.